In this video series, you'll learn how to create this Excel interactive sports betting dashboard with Bet Log Tracker. Hello everyone, Jonathan here with Excel Help Now, and I got a really cool video series for you. This is going to be part one of a multi-part series, and we're going to build the sports betting dashboard I have on the screen from start to finish. And you can see just putting some slicers in that we can analyze our sports betting history and look at a lot of different metrics just to see if we are on track or not with our sports betting and where we're profitable and where we're not so we can modify our methodology. So just showing here on the screen right now some of the functionality. You can see we have this summary table that looks at total profit, total ROI, total bets, overall win percentage, along with looking at what league, sport, sports book, and type we have, and uh, the month and year. We can see where we're placing our bets along with the average bet size, our wager type, and return on investment for each one of those wager types. Which sports book is most profitable? What odd bucket is the most profitable? What sport? And then our win percentage by different odds along with a monthly profit table, a win percentage by sports, and then at the bottom, I have some pivot tables that look at our different bet types and sports to see what profit we're getting on those different metrics, along with total number of bets placed and then our total wager amount. So a lot of really helpful information to be able to track your, your betting and to be able to identify the areas that you should be focusing on and the areas that you should disregard in your your sports betting in order to be profitable in the long run. So hopefully this looks exciting for you and something that you've been wanting to, to have. And hopefully this walkthrough gets you to be able to produce this all on your own. And I will just make a note that I do have a link in the description to this exact model. If you like how it functions, but don't want to go through the process of creating yourself, I do have a link for it available. But for today, this video, we are going to, to build out our bet log. So this is going to be where all the data is that's going to drive the dashboard. And then we're going to have some some data validation inputs just to make sure that one to make our bet tracker easy to update and two to make sure that we are bringing in consistent categories so our slicers don't have a lot of uh, values that don't make a lot of sense and then just skew what we're trying to accomplish by having some specific buckets to know where our sports betting is focused so with that said let's go ahead and just open a a new Excel workbook and we can dive into what we're going to be building today. Okay, everyone, I have a blank workbook pulled up here. We'll do a couple quick housekeeping items just to clean it up. We'll remove the grid lines and we can rename this tab to inputs. And so this is where we're going to have some tables for our data validation on our bet tracker, just to make sure that the categories we have are consistent. And so just to remove some of the free form and make the updating and logging of our bets much quicker. So the first table we're going to build is just going to be a bet type table. And then in here, you can just put whatever type of bets you, you typically place. Just a couple there, for example, arbitrage as well. And you can put in whatever type of betting you do, it could be more or less for the categories. And then once we have that, just go ahead and highlight the whole area, control shift down, and then do control T. And that will bring up the create table dialog box. And we're going to go ahead and say our table does have headers. It'll be the bet type label there. Okay. And then once you just go ahead and select one of the cells inside of it, and then go to table design. And then let's rename this. This will just make it helpful for our data validation. So we could just call this bet type table pretty simple there and just select out of that and so our second one we'll do our sports books this will be whatever sports books you currently have or foresee yourself having in the future just put in some examples here just so we have several different options to choose from okay so we get those typed in there and we're going to do the exact same thing we did before. Just highlight all of our data. Do control T to bring up the table dialog box. Go ahead and select my table has a header. And then we'll rename this to sports book table. Okay. And then just select another area. We'll do the league. So I'm going to put in 
the major sports leagues in the US, and then I have an international bucket to represent anything that's international. You can obviously change this for whatever betting you do and what leagues and sports you bet on. Put this in for, for now. Table design, we call this league table. Okay. And then our last one is going to just be the sport that the sports that we bet on. So baseball, basketball, just the major US sports at this point. But again, you can change this to whatever sports you like to place bets on. Put a couple in there. Additional. Okay. Rename that to sports table. So that's step one then. This is just to create our our input validation tables. And so then we will go ahead and insert another sheet. And this is where we'll call our, our bets. This is where all of our, our bets will be tracked. And so we'll do the same thing. We'll move our grid lines there. And we can just select um, B2 to get started. And so some of the, the important things to track, in my opinion, would be the date, and then the team, the league, the sport, the type of bet, our sports book that we placed it on, the odds that we were offered, how much we wagered, how much we were we were paid out, and then if that was either a win or a loss, and then the net amount of how much we made, so our profit, and then our return percent. So I'll explain all these different categories here, but let's get those kind of placed, and then you just put in a a first example here, and we can walk through just the information. So for the date, we can put in today's date, and then the team, we can put in you know, whatever you want to. So we can put in the Cowboys, the league, that'd be NFL, sport, football, tight, let's say it was a money line, sports book, let's say it was on FanDuel, and let's just say the odds were minus 110. So that's going through all that. You can see that that took a little bit of time to to input all that manually and then you know maybe you misspell football at some point or FanDuel or just you get lazy and just don't want to do this. So that's where having these different input values and data validation just make this a lot simpler. So what we're going to do is let's go ahead and just create a table here. Same thing we did before, just so we can have it. We can change the color, just make it like this green or something. And then we can change that table to our bet log. We have a table now, but let's go ahead and update. So the date and team, that's going to be unique. So what I like to do with anything that's more of a user input to change the color to like this, a dark blue, just so I know I've always got to manually input that. And the team is just there to help you know, you place a lot of different bets during the day on FanDuel, for instance, at minus 110 odds to know whenever you go back to input the actual outcome to know what bet corresponds to what line so that's why we have that team that could be something that's just whatever makes sense to you um, but just wanted to highlight that that's just how i kind of allow like allow myself to be able to track what i'm inputting here so let's go up here to this league the nfl and so we're going to go up to data data validation data validation and then we want to do a list and then our source is going to actually be what we could do is we could go select this drop down go over here to our table and then we could go to the league table and then we could just highlight rows three through nine click enter and click ok and then you can see we have all the different inputs we put there but the downfall of that is if we add any leaks to that they won't get picked up in our data validation. So what you want to do is go back here, and this is where rename of the table makes sense. Go ahead and highlight that table name. So we capture that league table. We'll go back, do the exact same thing. We'll go to data, data validation, data validation. Instead of referencing that input, what we're going to do is we're going to highlight that and go indirect, open parentheses, and then quotes. And then we'll just copy in that league table. Reference, close parentheses, and then click OK. So now you can see we still have our, our drop down, but let's go add 
another league or we could remove a league. So let's say we take out MLS. You can see MLS is no longer there, but if we want to add that back in, let's, and let's say we want to do WNBA. Since this is a table, it's going to go ahead and automatically expand to pick up WNBA. And we go down to our data validation and now we have WNBA. So it's just helpful because if not, you'd have to go through and update your, your cell references. So we're going to do that for each one of these. So the sport, we'll grab our table name. We call that sports table. Back here, we'll go to the same process, data, data validation, data validation. We'll go list, and we'll do equals indirect. Copy that in, close it. Click OK. So now we have our, our football there. And then we'll go back and then the bet type. Copy that. Data, data validation. List equals indirect. Okay. Better drop down there. And then the last one will be our sports book. And we just called that table sports book table. And you can obviously name it whatever makes sense to you. I just wanted to make it pretty explicit. So when you go to reference anything, it just makes sense. Table and the data is what the title represents. Okay, so now we have all of our data validation in there. And so the odds, this will be another blue cell just because that's going to be unique to each one line. There's no data validation. And then the wager amount will be the same. So let's say we did a, a dollar bet there. And then we'll go ahead and make that blue. And then the paid amount will be, so if we got paid zero, that means we lost. Or if we got paid you know, a certain amount, it's a dollar amount, so we'll make that a blue cell as well. Okay, and then something we need to do here on the odds is let's format those to be American odds. So we go to custom, and then you could just type anywhere, grab a reference, and then what we'll do is do plus zero, and then do semicolon, and then do minus zero. So that plus zero, it's positive as American odds are. They'll have a plus sign in front of them. And that just makes it a little bit easier to read. So minus 110 will have the minus. 250 will have the plus in front of it. So that's just helpful just so it reads better and you know, consistent with how American odds are. The next part is the three last columns where we're going to be inputting some formulas to be able to, to make some calculations off our input. So we're actually going to start with the, the net column. So that'll be column L. And we'll do equals if... Our paid amount equals blank. So this is an open bet. We're going to just return a blank. Otherwise, we're going to take our paid minus our wager and close that parentheses. So we bet a dollar, got paid a two dollars. So we netted one dollar return. Change that to five. We netted four. We changed it to, to zero, and we we lost a dollar. So that's how to read that. And then we'll look at our win loss column here. So we're going to start it the same way. So equals if. Our paid equals blank, then we're going to return blank. Otherwise, if this net amount is less than zero, then we're going to say that is a, a loss. If that's not true, then we're going to say if we wager equals what we were, were paid, we're going to call that a draw, so it's a push. Otherwise, if no, that's true, we're going to count that as a win. One more parenthesis there that we needed. So we were paid two dollars. We bet a dollar, so that's it's a win. Or we could say we bet a dollar, got paid a dollar, so net amount zero. That's a push. Or we wagered a dollar, got paid nothing. It's a it's a loss. So that's how to read that. Moving on to the return percent. So we'll start that with if error. Then we're gonna do our net amount divided by how much we wagered. That's an error. We'll just return a blank. So 100% there, 8, 0, you can see minus 100%. So that's how to read that. And since this is format as a table, get to the last cell in the table. So M3, you click tab, it'll insert a new row automatically. And then we can just input some dummy lines. You can see the formatting will carry down. You can just do these drop downs real quickly. So you can see how 
how quickly you can update once you get that data validation in. And there, all that line was much, much quicker to, to input than our, our previous example. We were manually inputting each line. So that just, it does save a lot of time, especially if you're doing multiple bets each day. So that is all of our input values to create the data, data validation. Now we have our bet logs. This will just be the master source for all of our, for our dashboard and the slicers and all those um, really cool interface charts. So this is really step one in the process. And um, I'll just flip back to what we're working towards as the, the end result here. So you can see our, our dashboard. So the next video, I'm going to walk through how to create this, this summary table where we'll create a pivot table for total profit, total ROI, total bets, overall win percentage, to start bringing in our, our bet log table to actually have some, some data behind it. And then we'll work on building out some of the further charts and slicers in follow-up video. So hope you found this helpful. Stay tuned. Please like and subscribe as we'll, we'll get into the following videos of this series. And again, the, the completed BetLog tracker is available in the link in the description. Otherwise, thank you for watching and God bless.